Okay. Um, let me, I just wanted to explain to everybody about what's going to happen today and how things are going to run. And this is normally the way they run when we do these meetings. But essentially, we'll have a speaker at the very beginning of it for anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes, depending upon how, how long it goes. And then we'll have questions and answer after that. Um, so hopefully it'll be right around a 30 minute time and I allow up to 50 minutes for questions. And then after that, what we're going to do is break out into breakout rooms and allow you to meet the people who are in the room as well as the speaker too as well. So that's kind of the overall strategy of how we're moving forward with this. Just want to give everybody an update on that. And with that, I just wanted to introduce um, uh, Matt Kontoff, who's our speaker. Uh, Matt founded Red Wing Capital as a way to provide smart real estate investments for passive investors looking for stable returns typically earned from multifamily apartment syndication investments. And he's managed over, over a period of 30 years while working as a software engineer. Uh, he has been active in the daily operation as well as overseeing renovations for properties too as well. Matt has invested in over 1,000 doors across several asset classes. And in his spare time, he likes to hike, ski, play tennis, and volunteers at his synagogue. And with that, I'd like to turn it over to Matt so he can talk to you a little bit about Bali and some of the lessons and insights that he has to that. Thanks, Charles. I uh, appreciate it. Um, thank you, everybody, for uh, showing up. I have a little slide presentation. It's more of a journey of where we are today and, and how we got here. And, and uh, it's kind of should be a little entertaining. Um, with that, I will uh, start the slide presentation. Okay. Everybody see that? Yep. Great. Okay. So this is about a hotel that we're building in Bali, Indonesia. This is an imagined an entry to the hotel. This isn't the real entryway, but it's this, this is sort of the vision that we have for the entryway. Uh, obviously, this is um, not a solicitation or anything. This is just really a presentation of information on uh, our project and progress so far so you can uh, I'm not going to read this I think we all have all seen this before so without further ado we'll get going here and uh, we're building a hotel in Bali so um, where's Bali that's in, in Indonesia which is in the in, the, in Asia out in the ocean there uh, Bali is known for um, I don't know if you heard of the Ticket to Paradise movie with George Clooney and Julie Roberts. That was shot there. Uh, the Eat, Pray, Love movie was it takes place in Ubud, which is really very close to where we're building. And there's uh, wonderful mountain views and river views and ocean views. And it's uh, just a very ecologically driven development. Uh, so there's just so much to do there uh, in Bali. 80% of their income comes from tourism. Uh, there's beaches and waterfalls and snorkeling and spas and surfing. And there's, uh, you know, other stuff. Uh, there's a monkey sanctuary. You can see a picture of it here. Uh, there's a bird park. And uh, Ubud is also the spiritual center of uh, Bali. So there's lots of temples in that area. And you can see there's a, a whole raft of other things that I didn't mention. Um, there's a glass bridge. Uh, you can see the rice fields. There's actually now uh, swings, big, big, giant, massive swings that you can um, use for the day. So here's the island of Bali. X marks the spot. That's where the gold's buried. And this is our land over here that in, in the uh, red. Um, we have a 20-year lease on this land that we secured a couple of years ago. Uh, and we're two years into it. And we have the option to renew the lease within five years at current market rates instead of waiting to the end of the 20 year lease, at which point the rates will be much, much higher. So that's a bonus for us. And what, that's one of the things that we're gonna do uh, as soon as we can. Uh, we also plan to expand into the land next door. You can see below this, this area here, I don't know if you can see me with the pointer. Uh, so one of the, our goals is to eventually build the hotel and then expand into this area. So I just, we didn't initially start building a hotel though. Um, our initial, initial plan was to build a bunch of villas. Uh, we were gonna 
build 10 to 12 custom villas, uh, actually starting with one as a model. And then from that, we would take orders for 10 or 12 other villas and folks could come in and they could customize how many bedrooms they want, uh, if they wanted a pool or not a pool and, and such. Uh, and after that, we were going to build some cottages. Uh, and I'll, we were going to do this. We needed a general real estate uh, permit. And uh, so we got a, an architect. We designed these villas. Uh, this is a concept, artist's concept of what it might look like. So we hired construction folks and we started building. Uh, this is actually our site plan initially. Um, you can't really tell which is which here, but the bigger items here are the villas. The smaller ones are going to be uh, cottages that we're going to use for short-term rentals. Um, so we start building. You can see over here on the left that this is essentially the frame of the first villa. There's a bunch of guys on the roof roofing the place. And some of the cements held up by wooden supports underneath there, you can see. Uh, it's obviously kind of a messy construction site. On the right here, you have one of the, one of the workers coming down stairs on a temporary stairs, and he's wearing flip-flops. So over in Bali, there's no such thing as OSHA. And uh, I've seen flip-flops. I've actually seen barefoot workers as well. So uh, anyway, um, partway through construction, we found out that we couldn't get a general real estate license permit, rather. Uh, we just got a hotel permit. And so a hotel permit limits us to four steel and glass structures like this one, not a dozen. So we had to pivot a little bit and we said to ourselves, OK, we'll build this. We'll sell three more. Uh, well, when I say sell, it's more of a lease. Uh, we lease the land. We don't own the land. Uh, land can only be owned by Indonesian nationals. So we are just leasing the land. Um, and we were going to lease a long term lease the villas to other customers like, you know, 25 year lease. Uh, now, we can build three more of those structures and then, then build the rest of the hotel after that. So um, here is this first villa. It's almost done. And this is a little um, walking tour. It's kind of cool. It's got all the glass. It's its own pool, a decking. And it's got a view of this little rainforest, uh, which is our land here. I don't think you can hear the monkeys yet. Um, on the right is um, you know, the bathroom, I think. Can't really see how awesome it is, but it's got all this lovely tile. This is uh, um, basically a living area. I think this is a bar with some unique ornate uh, marbling uh, and really neat little floors. Uh, here we have more of uh, what's com been completed to date. Uh, so uh, my partners and I have invested and built a villa. Uh, it's furnished here in this picture. And um, this on the left, this is some sort of interesting uh, light table down on a lower deck. It's kind of funky. Uh, this is what Eddie brought in. And on the right, you can see some of the landscaping. And uh, this video will sort of walk us through a little bit of the landscaping. This and this is I just this is gorgeous. I mean, this is so unique. Uh, it's really one of a kind how, how Eddie put this all together. And this is Eddie's office. We'll see Eddie in a few screens. Okay, here's the team. So, who am I doing with this? This with this is uh, this is basically how I got involved. On the left, we have Michelle, who I've known since I was a kid. Our friends were, uh, our, our parents were friends. And um, she called me up about a year and a half ago and said, hey, Matt, I've got some land and do you want to help me develop it? Um, we're going to build some villas and sell them and make a ton of money. And her partner is Eddie uh, in the middle there. And they've been uh, in business together in the jewelry business for about 25 years. 
so they know each other really well. And Eddie is um, a designer and a developer. So he his background includes uh, villa construction. Uh, so he's done uh, the this um, the Villa Conti, which is a really luxury villa with something like thirty five acres or something. He helped build the the Villa Lumbu Hotel, was a seventy uh, unit hotel. He designed and built this bird park um, with exotic birds and a fantastic um, um, landscaping. So he's really the visionary for for the the luxury boutique hotel that we're building. Uh, my experience is sort of spread out of, uh, over across a bunch of states in apartments, um, an RV park, new construction as a GP and an LP. And uh, I also own an Airbnb in Vermont, a little ski chalet here. Um, the two new bills I've actually been watching unfold, and uh, they are not without their issues. Um, this one in Arizona is doing quite well. The one in in Texas, they had a bit of a general contractor hiccup and they're trying to recover. But I think they'll, at the end, they'll figure it out and solve the problems that need to be solved. So why Bali? You can see a uh, hotel performance chart and trends. This is basically pre-COVID and over here is post-COVID. And this is actually an older chart. Uh, the numbers now are even much better. Uh, so here we learn, we're looking at uh, the occupancy, which as of July is 69%. The ADR, which is the average daily rate, and here this is the, it's measured in uh, in um, Indonesian rupiah. There's about 15,000 rupiah per dollar, and um, uh, the rev par, the revenue per available room, is, has also been increasing as well. So we're really poised to to uh, time this perfectly. Um, so one of the things that we did get, as I mentioned, we got a hotel permit. Since then, the Regency has, has uh, not given out any more hotel permits. I think we were the last one or one of the last ones. So that reduces the competition that we'll have. So uh, we have a, actually a, a timeline, a construction timeline of 18 to 24 months. We have permits, we have architectural plans, we have a site map, and we're basically ready to continue building the hotel. So, but wait a minute, whoops, what happened here? Our, the Remember I mentioned the land that we were thinking of expanding into? Well, this is it. Uh, the owner decided to sell the dirt, literally, you can see down here the road on the lower left, you see a little moped or whatever scooter going by and the uh, backhoe piling up the dirt. So now we cannot expand onto their land. Uh, here's another picture of uh, the crater that they created. And this crater, uh, this hole can actually be seen from space. Uh, here's a, a before and after picture from uh, Google satellite view. And you can see right here where they dug. This is where we were planning to build. Um, so we had to pivot a little bit. Uh, we can't build there. We actually have to build a retaining wall so our land doesn't doesn't um, flood or slide into his land. Uh, that's one issue. You can also see that the, the villa that we built is right here. Uh, so this kind of changes things a little bit. We had a, This is our site plan that we had. I should probably move this up. This is our new hotel layout. So these big buildings here, these three, were gonna be uh, villas made of steel and glass, but now they're gonna have to be um, you know, of wooden uh, materials. We can't, the, the steel and glass ones have to have really deep footings. And now that the land next door is gone, the land isn't stable enough to put those in. So. We decided that, okay, well, we're not gonna build those steel ones. We'll just make them a little bit lighter and build them out of wood um, with, with you know, pointy roofs and such. And those will be VIP uh, villas with pools. Um, there'll be more VIP villas in this area. And then on the left here, this year, just standard villas. And each villa, uh, excuse me, each 
lodge, not villa. These are lodges, excuse me. Each lodge has one or two rooms. We'll be able to, to uh, rent each room individually, but if folks want to join two rooms together, they can. Um, over here, we have uh, the spas and wellness center. We have a restaurant and a pool and a, a lovely little um, lobby area. Uh, so what we need to do now is we, we've got to keep going. We're going to um, start uh, building the hotel. So we're going to start with uh, the structures nearest the river just because of access. And uh, that's the spa and the restaurant and the deluxe and VIP lodges. And then from there, we'll build some of the other lodges and smaller buildings um, on site. So we're gonna we're gonna have uh, gorgeous furnishings. So Eddie is the 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 genius behind this vision, and he's gonna bring in some amazing uh, furnishes and finishes to the property. He'll be designing the restaurant, um, and um, we're gonna have all kinds of amenities, including airport shuttles. Um, and then we're gonna open. We hope to open in a couple of years after we start construction. So I remember I talked about the land. We have a 20 year, we have a 20 year lease on about three and three quarters acres. And uh, right now, the average market price for land is about 9,200 per acre. And we paid about 4,000 per acre, 4,000 to 5,400 per acre. So the value of our, the land that we're leasing is basically double. So that's good. This is a picture here from our land looking north, you can actually see the, the river down below. Okay, so these are um, pictures that Eddie sent over. This is basically uh, his creative genius at work here. This is These are just um, our vision, his vision basically of what we might build. And they're just really unique kinds of uh, rooms. Lots of artistry, lots of uh, balony specific um, touches. Uh, we're also going to build a lagoon that looks like this, and uh, hopefully with fewer rocks so people can swim. But you know, people will be able to wade in and play in the water. And this is going to be uh, right in front of our restaurant as well. On the left is a sample lobby under a joglo. Uh, so a joglo is basically a pavilion. It's made out of uh, teak, and some of them are ornately carved. Um, and then when you just um, reconstruct the joglo in place, and then you add the furniture, and you can put walls, glass walls around, and you actually have a building. Pretty simple. Um, so like I mentioned, uh, we can have a lot of uh, features and facilities at this hotel. We plan to have airport transfers, a full spa experience. We'll be able to book tours and other services. We'll have a gift shop and a gallery. Here's some amenities. I'm gonna let me read all of these all at once here. So we have, no, I'm not kidding, I'm just kidding. <laughs> this is a lot of amenities, but uh, as you can see, all this makes it a luxury boutique experience for our guests. So in addition to um, hotel and restaurant income, there'll be income from spa and from weddings and tour bookings and art sales, all generating basically a 30% commission on those, um, those features. Um, we do have uh, some competition nearby. I mean, there, here are some just some comps that I've done some research on. So similarly, applies price to their um, they're in the same vicinity. Here's Ubud here. You know, these are all within a half an hour away, and you can see the the um, comps. Here's another view of the, the river looking northwards. So our hotel, our 
our rates are between 250 and 3500 the 3500 rate is for the, the, the deluxe lodge and that comes with a 24-hour valet and uh, maybe a car whatever services that you can think of so here's some more inspirational photos um this picture on the right is actually a mountain that's visible from the Patanu Hotel in the property. You know, there's some beautiful pools overlooking the rainforest. These are just meant to be inspirational. We may do something similar. We'll see what Eddie has up his sleeve. Um, and then uh, this is uh, an ongoing investment right now. It's a 506C syndication. Uh, we do have draft legal documents in hand. And uh, you know we can go over some of these numbers if you like. This is the pitch part. If you're interested in investing, we're anticipating a, an average annual return of 36% with a whole period of five to seven years. Uh, the partners, myself, Eddie, and Michelle, have already spent about two million bucks on the property so far with entitlements and building the villa and infrastructure. And we need to raise about 10.6 million to complete the rest of the hotel. Anyway, that's it. Uh, I hope uh, there's some questions at the end. Here's how you can view more. It's redwingcap.com slash the Patano that will take us to the portal and you can download the, the offering memorandum. And here's how to reach me, Matt at redwingcap.com. And uh, I have actually one bonus video that I want to show and share with you guys. This is um, a low budget drone uh, view of the property. Uh, Eddie is up on a crane. And he's uh, just lowering himself down. It's like a poor man's drone. And he's just swinging in the breeze. He has really no control of where he's going. Anyway, so that's that. Uh, any questions? Any comments? Hey, I have a question. Shoot. Uh, great presentation. I've been to Bali, beautiful place. Um, how are you financing the debt portion of, of the build, or is there any debt portion? No debt. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, no debt. Cool. Yep. Any other questions? Thought of another question. Um, I saw the way you're raising equity with a 10% pref. What's the um, a carry on that? It's an 80 20 split. Hmm. Cool. Thanks. Yep. So um, I'm curious about your Bali experiences. J Jigesh, is that right? That's right. Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah so I went to Bali last year. Um, uh, we did about 10 days there. We were in Uluwatu, Ubud, and Seminyak. Mm -hmm. um, we, it, I, we felt like each place it was a little bit different. Uluwatu is like the surfer village, kind of slower, quieter, uh, calmer. Ubud was very cultural, touristy, um, and 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 had a lot of interesting things. I think that was my favorite part of the trip. And then Seminyak was a lot more modern with nightclubs and well, not nightclubs, but like pool pool clubs and um, bars and restaurants and stuff like that. So so that overall, it was like a great experience. Got got a little bit of everything, and then. The, the people were just very, very nice. Um, we had a driver and that he was kind of on, on my WhatsApp and he would pick us up every day and take us wherever we, we wanted and um, would suggest, make suggestions and things like that. And so 
um, the people were great. Yeah, it's a very um, it's a very different culture. It's very simple um, culture. Uh, there's some there's a level of naivety naivete um, with the people, and one of the things that we've learned is that they don't like to say no, and they don't you know, they just want to say yes. So if you ask them, you have to ask the right questions to get the actual information that you need. So that's kind of tricky. Yeah. Yeah. But they they are very nice. Mm -hmm. um, and and we stayed at boutique hotels uh, throughout the trip, so it, it was interesting. Like the first one in Uluwatu was called Village Bali, and it was two guys from Europe um, who had uh, just built it like during the pandemic. I think they were supposed to open during the pandemic, and then the pandemic happened, and they pushed out the opening. Um. And then similarly, oh, the second one we stayed at was, I think it's a local resort, like a local change. I think it's, I don't know how to pronounce it, but Dijiwa. I saw. Oh, one yeah. Of properties. Uh, that's one of our comps. Yeah. Yeah. And then they have another property in Ubud, um, which I can't remember exactly what it's called right now, but they, I think they have a, multi, a few, few properties. I looked at their website. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that one uh, was also great. And then the third one was at Seminyak and yeah, modern, yeah. very modern. Yes, Seminyak is much more built up and crowded and, and busier. And yeah, yeah, this this is um, a little bit of rainforest. It's pretty much away from stuff, mm. uh, even though it's just a little over a mile to the beach. Um, it's sort of on the outskirts of its uh, the Sukawati neighborhood. And uh, there's actually a, a mall that you can actually walk to around the corner. Very cool. Oh. Blue so, Karma. That was the hotel. Karma. Blue Karma. Oh, Blue Karma. Okay. Yeah. So basically, as we're going through this, it's a series of um, uh, problem solving and pivoting, and uh, it really, is uh, at the end of the day, if you can solve the problems that you run into and the curveballs, then and and try and mitigate any uh, unforeseen issues that may crop up, which, you know, it's a different country. Uh, I was just in shock when the neighbors started selling their dirt. I'm like, who does that? We were we were talking to them to eventually rent their land and they're like, oh, well, you're not gonna do it now. So I, just, I, I, need, I need some money, I'm gonna sell my dirt. So I just, that made me think, um, you know, what else can go wrong? Right, we have to have some sort of serious uh, risk mitigation meetings to figure out. But there's land on the other side that we may expand into as well. Uh, you know, above where I was showing. What is the the risk in you renting the land versus owning the land? And what was the decision? How did you make the decision to rent the land versus buying the land? Because you guys are building substantial stuff on on leased land. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, so it wasn't really a choice. Um, the three of, none of the three of us are Indonesian natives, and only Indonesians are allowed to own land. So we did the next best, best thing, and that was to lease it. So we have a lease for 18 more years, and we can re renew the lease for 35 more years after that. So um, we'll have a, at least a 50 year lease going forward. And then at a certain point, we'll, we'll probably sell the hotel. That lease will go with the hotel and the next owners can continue the lease in perpetuity. <clears throat> Keep renewing every, every three, whatever, however many years. At the end of the lease, if you decide to end your lease and, and walk away, the owners of the land get everything that you built. So it's it's great for them if they you know if you have any permanent structures there. Okay, thank yeah, you. Yeah, I just I'm curious. Like, is there can you get debt on this because it's leased land, or like is the is there a potential to exit by refi, or is it exit by sale only? Um. Well, if we were to refi, so again. Uh, debt is not available to non-Indonesians. 
So we're raising the entire amount to build the hotel, and and uh, we believe 10.6 is enough to build the first phase of the hotel before expanding. And then the so it says exit within five to seven years. Is that five to seven post construction, or is that five to seven from from today? Yeah, from now, from when we start construction. So we'll have a couple of years when there's no income. We'll operate it for three or four or five years, and um, decide at some point when it's right to to sell thanks yep anybody else nope okay well uh charles i want to thank you for letting me present my little uh hotel project appreciate it i hope it was uh, well received and again if you have any questions feel free to reach out um, you can reach me at matt at redwingcap.com. Um, and I'm also on LinkedIn. Good, man. Thanks a lot, man. I appreciate you coming out and doing, taking the time to do this. Oh, my pleasure. Let me stop the recording. <laughs>